Good afternoon everyone and welcome to another question answered in the Ask the Artist series. Uh, it's a rainy Sunday uh, in Stroud in the UK. I'm in doing my paperwork and my month end accounts and I thought right it's a good opportunity to help answer some more questions. Let's turn this around so I can see you. There we go. And uh, So anyway let's go out of the office. Today what I wanted to look at uh, was quite a contentious one which is uh, come from a couple of people actually asking how to price their work. Difficult Please don't all leave comments about saying that I haven't got a clue what I'm talking about. Um, but pricing is incredibly difficult because there are almost too many factors to consider when you come to try and price your work. And of course, although I've only started getting into sculpture recently and mine isn't cast or anything like that, uh, I've got an idea about what sculpture's like to price and it's completely different to paintings. So let's try and relate this back just to paintings for now. Um, okay, so... Uh, it's difficult to know where you are at in your art career, whether you're just starting out, whether you've established a market, blah, 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 blah. So let's see if I can quantify this. In simple terms, forget the square inch price formulas you can see all around these art blogs. Take your material cost and use a multiplier. So that is your raw material cost. Cost of your canvas, your paint, brushes, special tools, finishes, glosses, uh, framing around the outside, glazing, anything like that. Uh, if you're just starting out, take your entire material cost, times it by four or five. That'll get you going. When you've established some sales through that, go between five and ten times material cost. Um, establishing yourself, go twelve times plus from there, really. Now what that does, that builds in uh, a little bit of a margin for you to reinvest in materials and it gives you some of your time back for social media promotion, etc, etc, etc. Of course, before you all write in, there are a huge amount of factors that will change that. Um, and from my experience, although we use a slightly different formula, and I'll tell you why in a moment, uh, time and size are two of the biggest influences. So for example, if something has taken five months to paint or six months to create, um, is it realistic to times your, your output by four or by five? It's never gonna anywhere near cover the cost of your time. Now I know a guy who does two paintings a year, just two. Um, so one each for every six months of his life. What kind of price do you put on that? I mean, that, that's, that's just crazy. Um, but he sells them for 50 to 70,000 pounds each. So that's why he makes it work. But he's been doing it for 30 years and he has a market and he's incredible. I mean, incredible. And I totally would buy one if I had that kind of money. So that's a, a different end of the spectrum where that kind of formula just isn't going to work. Um, so really this, this kind of pricing advice is, is you know, if you're kind of sort of on that starting out kind of merry-go-round, really, that, that's, that's kind of the takeaway from this. Or if you're just generally struggling to try and position yourself with the market that you're in. Size is a big factor as well. If something's bigger, generally speaking, it will carry a higher price than something that is the equivalent that is smaller. There'll be a bigger material cost, although depending on the medium you're working in, it may not be um, exponential to the cost of a smaller one. So you've got to be quite clever in how you work out your material costs. Um, I'd also, in, I wouldn't include time in that just for now. Um, but again, it just depends where you're at kind of in your kind of art marketing for, for want of a better word. And of course I could do some pretty big works and over a certain size or volumetric area, for me anyway, my material costs just go through the roof. So exponentially it makes my larger pieces over a certain size quite a bit more expensive, whereas you would think that's disproportionate. But in actual fact, there can be quite a sizable material cost difference in the sizes of the canvases that I make. Um, but that's just through practice, really, that I've just found out what those costs are. And by using a calculator, I use them ahead. And that's it. But ultimately, two things will determine whether your pricing structure is right. If your market can't afford it, and secondly, they don't perceive it as being value or having a perceived value, then you're never going to sell any of it. 
So, look, you know, I, I could probably talk for about half a day on this subject, and all really this is is just maybe to give one or two of you a few pointers if you're struggling. Just start with the five times multiple and go from there and see what happens, and then you can tweak it up and down accordingly. Um, so I hope that's been of some use, or if it doesn't completely answer the question, but it is quite a difficult one. Anyway, love to hear your comments. If you've got any questions that we're answering, try me at info at suarez.co.uk or leave them in the comment section. Okay, see you next time. Bye-bye.